Animals you're familiar with, because often we use them as food. Okay. Mollusks have soft bodies on the inside, but often they produce um, a calcium-based shell around the outside. They have their soft bodies are called the mantle. Okay, lots of them move with something called a muscular foot, kind of uh, moves them around the, along the ground. Um, and so it includes things that you're familiar with, okay, things like slugs. This is a mollusk, but it doesn't produce a shell, okay, but it's a, a terrestrial land-based um, mollusk that you find in your backyard, you know, in the spring, summer, fall. They eat vegetation. Um, eat plants in your garden sometimes, unfortunately. Um, an octopus, squid, these are also mollusks. Uh, octopus are pretty uh, amazing invertebrates, and we're going to watch a video a little bit later on showing some of the abilities they have to camouflage themselves, and they're really, really interesting. And then we have the, they're called bivalves, the um, mollusks with two shells. It includes things like um, oysters, clams, mussels. Those are mollusks. They produce those shells. Um, those, they are filter feeders. So they live in the water. They have a siphon, which sort of sucks water in. And as the water goes through them, they filter out little bits of food uh, and then release that water. That's their um, nutrition. And Mollusks also include snails, which uh, are land or water based. Nautilus is another type of mollusk. Ooh, sorry. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Nautilus. Okay. They form those kind of spiral shells that you might find. And this is a conch. So sometimes people get confused because a lot of people have had hermit crabs as pets. Is a hermit crab a mollusk? No, because no, it's right. So the shell on these mollusks, it's part of them. It's part of their body. It's not an exoskeleton. It's sort of an integrated part of them. And um, you can't take the shell off of a snail. It's part of its body okay, without damaging it. A hermit crab is a crustacean, an arthropod. It uses the shells of other organisms to sort of crawl inside and use as protection, but it doesn't produce that shell. You know, when you go to the beach and you find shells, pretty much what you're finding are mollusk shells. So after these organisms die, okay, the living parts of them decompose, but the shells are durable and they stay intact and wash up on the beach and you can find them and so forth. Um, so those are the mollusks. How many people have eaten clams? Oysters? Mussels? Um, squid? Calamari? Yeah. Um, snails? Yeah. Conch? People eat conch as well? Yeah. You had conch before? I've eaten, I've eaten everything on this. They like shorts it and how they like Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, octopus, people eat octopus as well. Yeah, probably like Christmas Eve, people eat octopus salad. Yeah. yeah. All right, anyway, so lots of these we use as food. And that brings us to our last phylum of invertebrates, the arthropods. This is a huge, huge group. What does the root pod mean, podiatrist, pseudopod, dingy? Feet. The name means jointed feet. And so these animals have exoskeletons, but between the plates of their exoskeleton there are gaps, which we call joints. Because obviously, you know, if you have a suit of armor or Iron Man, if you have just two tubes of steel for your arms and legs, like it's not very effective, right? You'd have to walk around like this. So between each place where their movement is recorded, there's a gap called the joint so that they're can be some, some bending of those areas. And so that's why they're called arthropods. Obviously, here's an ant. It's a type of arthropod. They have bodies broken into sections. And different types of arthropods have different numbers of body sections. 
They have bilateral symmetry, and they have a hard covering known as an exoskeleton. When we talked about inverts, we said invertebrates are about 95% of all identified animals. Well, 75% of all animals are just in a single phylum. And we're going to get a little bit more specific with arthropods. So we're in domain what? No, you carry Kingdom, animal. Phylum, arthropod. Within that, we'll list some of the classes of arthropods. So, one class are the arachnids. Arachnids have two body sections. They have eight uh, legs. They include spiders as well as things like ticks. Scorpions are arachnids. Another class are the insects. That's the largest class. Insects have three body sections, six legs. It includes, you know, bees, ants, mosquitoes, beetles, ladybugs, many things that we're familiar with. Crustaceans. Crustaceans are arthropods with ten legs. It includes this crab, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp. Those are all crustaceans. Hermit crab. And then we have two more groups. Centipedes. Do centipedes have a certain number of legs? No. They don't. They have one pair of legs on each section of their body, but the number of sections in their body can vary. Centipedes are generally carnivorous, they eat insects and things. Millipedes, again, do not have a million legs or a thousand legs. They have two pairs of legs on each body section. They're often herbivores, eat vegetable matter. So those are the five classes of videos that we'll come back to. These arthropods and some other organisms go through a process that we call metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is sort of a change in the body structure of an organism as it develops. Some arthropods go through a process we call incomplete metamorphosis. Because arthropods have a hard exoskeleton, basically once it forms, it remains the same size. And so when you have a young arthropod, such as this grasshopper, that it can't really grow larger when it's contained within that exoskeleton. So what happens is, periodically, they molt and break out of their existing exoskeleton so that they can grow larger and form a new exoskeleton afterwards. And they may go through that process several times until they reach their fully grown stage, and then we consider that an adult insect. So the stages are called the egg, obviously, which hatches into the small stages, the immature nymph stages, which eventually leads to the adult stage. And that process of shedding the exoskeleton is called molding. You now I have up here, I glued to the bookshelf, this tiny little insect exoskeleton. Okay, we used to find these in my backyard. We used to have like one of those wooden swing sets. And you know, in the spring and summer, you find all the time, like little, looks like a, a beetle or a cicada um, attached to it. And my daughters are always freak out. But they're actually not alive. All that is, is the exoskeleton. So at some point, this beetle went on to the swing set. It's a nice, soft cedar wood so it can sort of grasp on. And then their exoskeleton splits in the back. The 
organism emerge, comes out of the back of it, and then it can form a new, larger exoskeleton. But the old exoskeleton stays sort of stuck there in that position. Aiden? No, they don't have exoskeletons, but they shed their outer scales periodically, so it's not quite the same thing. All right, so that's called incomplete metamorphosis. And so this is a neat video. This sh shows what? What is this? A crab? What? What? Phylum? No. Oh, arthropod. What class? Crustacean. So crabs have obviously a, a hard, strong exoskeleton that they use for protection. But again, just like I was explaining, in order to grow larger, they need to shed that exoskeleton. Maybe you saw that episode of SpongeBob. Yeah. That's what just reminded me. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So based in reality, right? So this crab is sheds its exoskeleton, it molts, and basically they pull out of their old exoskeleton, and for a period of time their bodies are soft. Okay? Well, they're growing larger, well a new exoskeleton forms, and so in that time they're vulnerable to predators. The exoskeleton is great protection, but when they emerge from that after molting, there's a period of time before the new exoskeleton forms that um, leaves them vulnerable to predators. So I'll just show you, this is, um. It's time lapse, it's not sped up super fast, but it's sped up a little bit. So it's in an aquarium. Okay, this is the video, there's the spider crab. Yeah. And it's just hanging around, eating little bits of food and so forth. And you can already see it's starting to grow out towards the back of this uh, carapace. It's starting to, you could see, outgrow it. And so once it's ready to actually do the molting, you see that those are the soft parts there. Um, when it's ready to do that molting, it basically slows down, stops, and then just sort of pulls itself out like it's pulling out of a sweater or something. Show that again. So it just backs out, pulls its, its legs out of the shell, and then it, and again, this will form a new exoskeleton. Yeah, it's vulnerable at this point when it's still soft. Yeah, soft shell crab. Yeah, that's. Yeah, like so. Yeah, several. I don't know the exact time. It depends on probably the crustacean. I would say uh, a week or so, maybe. Just hide. All right. There is also um, metamorphosis, which is called a complete metamorphosis. In complete metamorphosis. The animal changes not only gets larger, but its whole sort of body structure changes in the time of metamorphosis. So uh, an example we're all familiar with is a, a caterpillar, which is the larval stage of a butterfly. You know, the egg hatches into the larva, which eventually moves into the pupa stage, where it transforms and eventually emerges as the adult. Okay? And so the stages are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Now, what's the main per what is the main job of the larva stage? Aiden? Mm -hmm. To eat as much as possible, to get as many nutrients as possible, to store energy for it to then um, metamorphize into the adult. What's the main job of the adult stage? Hey, mom? Yeah, to reproduce and lay new eggs to continue the species. So this video shows, uh, again, this is a time lapse of a monarch butterfly. 
See the caterpillar stage? It's already eaten. Then you have the pupa stage, and from that will emerge the adult butterfly stage. It, no, it takes a while for its wings to dry out. It sort of pumps blood into them to sort of um, extend them. They dry out, and then it can fly soon after that. How long do they spend the time in the... Uh... Uh, it depends on the species. So, um, you know, it could be a few days, could be weeks. What's the cocoon, like, made out of? It's just made out of, like, the same sort of material as the exoskeleton, oh. chitin. Um, it also happens, you know, a uh, fly, the larval stage is the maggot and then it metamorphizes into the adult stage. Um, mosquitoes go through a larval stage in the water. Um, so lots of different insects um, go through this metamorphosis. It's not as sort of striking sometimes as the butterfly, and we don't see it, and it's quicker, because it happens in other places, but lots of insects do go through this process. <clears throat> so tomorrow, we're gonna try to get to it today, but we'll actually do it tomorrow. We are going to be looking at some preserved specimens of some insects. We're going to be looking at grasshoppers. Um, and so grasshoppers, you know, got the typical parts of many insects. Um, and so, like I said, all insects have how many body sections? Three. 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 There's the front section, which we would call what? The head. The head contains sense organs, okay, the mouth parts. You know what the middle section is called? Great. Is it the thorax? Yeah, the thorax is the midsection. That's where the wings attach, it's where the legs attach. And then the posterior most section, right, Jessica? The abdomen. That's the abdomen, right. It's where the reproductive organs are, respiratory organs, good. So those are the main body sections of the insect. Um, the sense organs in the grasshopper has antenna for sort of sensing chemicals in the air. It's almost like smelling. That's where the eyes are. Now, what do you do? You know anything about insect eyes, Carter? Sort of. They're called. It's called a compound eye. And the eye of insects is made of many smaller lenses, all sort of packaged together to form the eye. You know, people always ask, well, what does it look like to the insect? Well, it's impossible really to say what it looks like. They have a, a minuscule, tiny little brain. So it's hard to, for us to probably comprehend what it looks like through all those lenses. But somehow, their brains integrate all that information coming in to form their vision. Number six are the, we call these the mouth parts because it varies. It's not like a mouth, but it varies from insect to insect. Some insects, like the grasshopper, that are adapted to feeding on you know, leaves and vegetation, they have special mouth parts for cutting through the leaves in sections. Others have parts for gathering up things. Uh, others have mouth parts that they bite um, an animal. So it depends on the type of insect you're talking about, what those mouth parts are like. Well, number seven, this is in the abdomen. These tiny little circles, these holes, these are the respiratory um, parts of the grasshopper. They're called spiracles. And that's how air gets into the grasshopper for them to obtain oxygen comes in through these holes in each body section of the abdomen, each segment. The end, number eight, this is a reproductive organ. This is in the female grasshopper. It's called the ova positor. Ova meaning what? Yeah, close. What does that mean? What? Ovary. Ovary, ovule. Over pasta, it's reproductive. Uh, it means, yeah, the eggs. So, eggs um, is what ova means. Positor, and this is used for depositing eggs. And the female insects often um, 
the male will deposit sperm inside of the female ovipositor, and then that sperm can actually be stored for days, weeks, even months. And when it's time for the female to lay eggs, some of that sperm is used to fertilize the actual eggs, and then the female releases them afterwards. Okay. And so that's called the ovipositor. Number nine are the wings. Many insects have wings, not all, obviously. And wings are used for uh, flying. And often, many insects have two pairs of wings. One pair of wings, which is on top, which is sort of thick and uh, a sort of protective covering. For example, the ladybug, the part you see that's red and has little black dots on it, those are wings. And when it's time for the ladybug to fly, those thick protective wings flip up. And underneath are the thinner, more delicate wings that it actually uses to fly. Okay? And those pop out and actually help it to fly. And then finally, number 10 are the legs of this grasshopper. Depending on the type of arthropod, the legs that can be adapted for, for walking or for jumping. Some, um, some may have legs that uh, are different, like the grasshopper. The hind legs are very thick and strong for jumping, but then the forelimbs are less, less so. so. Again, just another view. We'll be looking at these grasshoppers in class tomorrow. Can you see adult stages versus the immature nymph stage? So let's um, let's, watch that right. let's let's just finish up here by talking about the invertebrates we looked at last week. So we looked at three invertebrates: Hydra, Daphnia, and Planaria. Here you see some microscope image of the Hydra. So what phylum was the Hydra in? Nidarian. Yeah, just write, I know you don't have like all the sections, you can just write, write these. So, what type of symmetry does a hydra have? Brian? Radial. Radial symmetry. Has one body opening here in the middle of all the tentacles. Its body is just like a hollow sac where it puts food into that. It gets digested, and then any waste comes out of that same opening. What's the name of the stinging cells? Remember that? Dean? Uh, was it like just tentacles? They're on the tentacles. Oh. Uh, Nematocysts. <sighs> Nematocysts are what the hydra uses to sting and immobilize its prey. Hydra can reproduce both sexually and asexually. One way they reproduce is through budding. And budding, basically a new hydra starts growing out of the side of the adult hydra. Like this. And eventually it breaks off, floats away, and becomes its own hydra. It's called budding. It's just a small section of hydra grows and then falls off. So that's obviously asexual reproduction. It's only one parent. It's a clone of the adult. But hydra also can reproduce sexually. Hydra are known as hermaphroditic animals. And that means there's no separate male and female hydra. All hydra have both male and female reproductive organs. So all hydra can produce both sperm and egg cells. But often they will, usually they will get together and exchange sperm and egg cells with another hydra, resulting in sexual reproduction. We also looked at the Daphnia. What phylum is the Daphnia? Joey? Um, arthropod. It's an arthropod. It's a 
crustacean in the arthropod phyla. Tiny little crustacean. Has bilateral symmetry and exoskeleton, although its exoskeleton is basically transparent, so you can see its organs inside of it. Saw the hydra eating the daphne, swim through the water. Any questions? I'm going to show you the uh, video here. 